This episode of the Retail is Podcast is sponsored by Chesapeake Bank. For more than 122 years, Chesapeake Bank has been there for you, serving the Northern Neck, Middle Peninsula, Williamsburg, Richmond, and Chesterfield. Their team of banking professionals are your friends and neighbors, and they care as much about the community in which they live as you do. Visit chessbank.com for more info. All right, today we are joined by Dylan Richmond from Clean Eats Chesapeake and Virginia Beach. Dylan, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, happy to have you here. So let's get into it. Why don't you just tell us an overview of your business? Uh, what do you guys do? What you sell? Where you're at? Uh, how long you've been open? All those background info that uh, people are going to be uh, needing to know to uh, dive into this podcast. Okay. Yeah, great. So Clean Eats Virginia Beach, I opened in 2018 in August. Uh, so that one's been open for a few years now. I just opened uh, Clean Eats Chesapeake on, on Greenbrier or Volvo Parkway in January 20th of this year. So kind of what Clean Eats is about, we want to be the first step someone might take in uh, living a healthier lifestyle. We build family, community, we keep it fun, enjoyable. What we do is kind of bring food and flavor um, all together and make it super portable to where you can really enjoy your food, the right ratios of protein, carbs, and fats, and still live that healthy lifestyle. Um, so you can come in and dine in with us, get a quick casual lunch. You can do takeouts, run third-party delivery apps as well for the cafe menu. Okay. And then we have the weekly meal plan, which is very popular. So you can order that every single week, which is cool about that. It se separates us from most, no contract, no subscriptions. You're not signing up for anything. You physically go on each week and you have to take a look at the menu and you have to physically put your order in. Now you have from Tuesday to Sunday to order all meals and Sunday starts pickup. Sunday to Wednesday, you come grab all those things. Uh, we also do catering, protein smoothies. We do custom meal plans. So anyone that might be, hey, I'm vegan or I'm vegetarian or, hey, I need to meet these daily macros uh, or I'm an athlete or I'm preparing for something, you know, your doctor might send them a meal plan. They bring it in. We can follow that too. Okay. And we also have a huge shopping area in the store that allows more food, flavor, variety, different calorie levels that you can shop seven days a week too. So it takes the whole stressful grocery shopping, a lot easier to come in and kind of pick it. You don't have to cook it. You don't have to do the dishes. because You're not washing anything. Yeah. So there are prepared meals that you can just buy individually. So yes, that's correct. That? Okay. All right. Is that the meal plan? Is the meal plan the um, cooked meals or are they cooking it? Oh yeah. All the meals are cooked. So the okay. meal plan meals are all individual in store. All the meals are individual as well. There's no cooking involved. You're just going to reheat to the temperature of your liking and you're ready to go. Mm, wow. Okay. And this is part of a franchise, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So where is the headquarters for the franchise? Franchise headquarters is in Wilmington, North Carolina. Um, they they started, they moved over there in 2011. They started franchising out in 2016. And okay. they've pretty grown pretty rapidly with all the store locations that we have now. Yeah. How, how many are there? There's 73 open to dates right now. Um, okay. We're pretty much opening, you know, almost a store a week. Sometimes there's two stores. Uh, so it's super fun and exciting wow. um, that we always talk about and post those things too. So it's like a big mm -hmm. family community. So where are you from? I'm from Charleston, South Carolina. Okay. So I, I grew up there, um, lived there most of my life. Uh, and then I started working at Clean Eats, managed a bunch of stores, moved to a bunch of different cities, managing stores, and then wow. purchased the area over here, moved to Virginia Beach. Well, that answered my next question. So are you, what's your role with the, the business? Are you the owner, franchise owner? Yeah, so I'm the franchise owner in this uh, location of Virginia Beach and Chesapeake. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm in the stores every single day. You can catch me in the Chesapeake store every day since we just opened that store. Nice. It's brand new. So I'm always over here. My team at Virginia Beach is amazing. I got a great team, a great manager. So those guys are solid over there. So so then that goes to my next question is, I guess it makes sense. You've been with Clean Eats for a while now. Is that what led you? Did you always know you wanted to buy a franchise? Was that the goal or did they just start? How did that happen? I mean, Obviously actually crazy, process. crazy story there. If you were to ask me, I don't know, eight years ago, what I was going to be doing. Um, I probably didn't even have a job. Um, I was in the fitness industry. I worked in supplement stores. I got my personal training degree. I did gym sales, worked in gyms. Uh, this is a very difficult business to get into the gym business. Um, and then I wasn't working for a little, for a little minute. Um, and I actually used to hate cooking. You, you would have met me in high school. I'm like, 
no, I'm not cooking anything. I don't want to cook. Uh, but the fitness industry, I ended up competing in bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. So I had to kind of cook and prep my food all the time. And that's where I learned about food a lot. So competing for five years um, was my passion in the fitness industry. And then I just, I found Clean Eats in 2016, actually. And so I just became a line cook, cashier, mm -hmm. kind of just did all the little things in the, the cafe and ended up managing a bunch of store locations. And I was like, hey, man, I love this. This is kind of my lifestyle, fitness, helping people out, meeting great people here in the stories. It's super fun, a lot of energy. Um, and I was like, hey, I can do this on my own. You know, I don't need to be managing stores all the time when I can kind of go out and start opening the stores myself and kind of took the big leap and risk. And it's been a journey since then. So how, um, what's the difference then, do you think, between managing the store and owning the store? I don't even think anyone's ever asked me that question. That's a good one. I've never even thought about that. Um, so my style, being an owner, I mean, there's a, a lot of like behind the scenes things that people don't see, but managing the store at the same time. I mean, a manager, if you take it, is running the store day to day kind of thing. They're supervising the staff. They're making sure the food quality is right. Customers are taken care of. There's no questions. Um, but that's kind of how I run my stores as a owner manager because I'm in my stores every single day. My customers know who I am. Uh, I have great conversations. Uh, I like to go on the news all the time so they see me. Um, so I like to really get behind meeting as much people as possible. So like I don't like to think myself as an owner. I feel you might I say that because I've been to I've been in a lot of businesses or seen a lot of businesses where some owners kind of just sit back. Mm -hmm. They just kind of watch what's going on. And that's not me. I get right into it. You know, I'm in there doing the dishes with my team. I'm cooking on the line with my team. Uh, I'm bringing customers up at the cash register with the team. Um, so that's, that would probably be my best answer to that. I mean, I'm a owner manager, really. Yeah. So, yeah, because, I mean, if you're managing the store before, were you in yeah. charge of, like, financials and inventory? You know, No, when I was working for these other when I was working for these other owners, I wasn't in charge of financial. I was in charge of doing all the inventory, ordering all the food, doing the inventory, um, making all the meals, coming up with some of the ideas um, in the kitchen. But I was never the backside of financial or looking at Stopping all the cost. Yeah, staffing, hiring. I always did the interviews and stuff. And I just, if I didn't post the ads, the owner something would take yeah. over and do that. So um, is that now what you having to get yes into now yeah that's what i get into is i mean i do all my own marketing so doing that mm -hmm. too running all the social media pages coming up with different ideas how to <laughs> reach out to the community and play a yeah. role into the community of virginia beach and chesapeake so i do all that which i i love doing that mm -hmm. uh, but then yeah hiring staff which has been uh you know a crazy fun time the past mm -hmm. few years um and then just all the behind the scenes stuff too so it was definitely a learning journey experience because I never looked at a PL before. I'm like, what what is a PL <laughs> managing? And I didn't have to do any of that. So then I got into that. Um kind of just look, you know, manage the financial side of things. So so what kind of support have you gotten as a franchise owner from Clean That's what exactly what I was going to ask you. <laughs> from from uh, like the corporate the headquarters. Yeah. yeah. What, what do they offer as support as far as their franchise owners? So I love those guys. I've Again, I have a different type of relationship with them because I've known them since 2016. I can call them up right now. I can shoot them a text right now. We can have just a general conversation on things. But they always support. They have a great business model, business plan. They're really responsive, really quick. Um, what I love about them, they visit each store. And they started this you know, about a year ago now to where they go to each state and they do a whole, all right, let's bring all the owners together. Let's hang out with them for like three days. We do things outside of work. It, you know, we go to dinners, we do something active. So that's really fun. They're really involved in the stores and what they're doing. Um, and so they, they give a lot of support. If I have a question about anything that I'm unsure of, or I'm like, hey, I don't really have much experience in this field. They have a whole set of team, you know, a whole team that you can email and they'll respond real quick on their advice or what they recommend in doing a certain situation. Or there's certain guidelines that we have to follow already. That's, you know, we got to keep those expectations because it's a pretty big team that they've got built in Wilmington already. Okay. And that's, um, it seems when I was looking at the map of where all the stores are, it's very concentrated on this side of the coast. What Correct. Is the plan? 
going? Yeah, it's on this side of the coast right now. Um, they are trying to get more out Midwest, wet in the West Coast. Um, it just becomes a little more difficult when you're already in, you know, on far on this side because you know the time changes, mm-hmm. the cost of the food, the cost of living changes. So the business model might have to change a little bit to adapt to that city or that cost of living or cost of operation in that city. Um, yeah, but they, they wanted to kind of take over the East Coast first because it's the closest nearby to where they can help out all their owners. Mm-hmm. And then they slowly, when they're ready and when they grow a bigger team, which that's happening and has happened, you know, they are starting to branch out. Like we pretty much have taken over the state of Texas already <laughs> fairly quickly. Um, and we're going further that direction. Is there geographical like restrictions that they put? Like you've got Chesapeake and Virginia Beach, but if someone wanted to open another one. There's a restriction as like a mile radius of a store close okay. nearby and also a restriction as how many stores is in uh, each city or state. But there's also, I think there's a lot of legal things behind of franchising a or having a franchise in a state um, okay. on approaching how many, you know, they would want as well. It's uh, so like a license pretty much, but. They're really respectful too on um, putting stores and bringing people into the area. Give you an example. Um, two and a half years ago, the CEO called me and was like, "Hey, man, I got to put another store in the area because um, you know we can put one in there with the plan with our team. I just have to put one there." And he was like, "I'm going to offer it to you first before I bring anyone else on." So he's mm-hmm. like, "Do you want to take over another territory?" And I was like, "Yeah, of course. I, I want another territory." And so. And that's when I was able to jump on. So they, they're very respectful of that nature. They'll ask whoever is nearby first. And if it's in yeah. the game plan, you know, they'll let you do it. If not, then they'll, you know, go through the appropriate steps to get that figured out. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So, so when did you <clears throat> when did you get open your first location? 2018 in August. Okay. And the second one was uh January 20th of this year. Okay. So uh, it was sort of on both sides of uh, COVID. What kind of challenges did you guys face with that? Yeah. So 2018 2018 when I opened that store was crazy. It was uh, the grand opening was fun. There was lines out the door forever. (laughs) And so that was, you know, pre COVID with that. And then 19 was really great. 20 was, I mean, still an amazing year and 20 was all amazing, but you saw how, the grand opening from that store, the grand opening to this store was completely different. Uh, networking has kind of slowed down a whole lot in person. Um, a lot that's kind of going on in the city is not anymore as what was before when I was marketing. Mm-hmm. And so my grand opening year was totally different. It was a super slow start in Chesapeake. And we're still getting that momentum um, pushing forward. But I also opened when it was snowing, which was like the week it snowed, I, I had already had the date in place, so I couldn't change it. So that That's played rough. factor yeah. too. Yeah, so it was rough from the snow for like a couple of weeks in a row. Yeah. So yeah, it's 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 been huge with with COVID on just the marketing side of things. But that's why, you know, mm. if you watch what people are doing, you move your marketing to mm. what everyone's on their phone. So that's where you're gonna target most of your marketing. It's phone, computers, um, what, what they're doing. So it's not always in person. As, as much anymore yeah digital yeah definitely yes it's been growing the last 10 years so. so so did you have any background in that the digital marketing have you just been learning as you've been going yeah i've just been learning as i'm been nice. going i had no uh no experience now i know a whole lot that i didn't know before from targeting different demographics audiences building interests seal fencing um and that's just more on the digital side of it i've run all kinds of different banner ads, ads, using other people's social media, following, building influencers, uh, posting. Um, I mean, that's a whole nother topic I could probably talk about for a while. Yeah. Um, and I enjoy that part. It's building a connection to people and other business professionals that you reach out to to kind of partnership because mm-hmm. we're all on the same team here, helping everybody else in the community. So it's, yeah, I've definitely learned as I went. That's a question then that I was thinking about asking and then you sort of broached a little bit so as a franchise how do you try to like you know fit in with the local community and make sure that you know they know that you're more community-based than just you know a nameless franchise that has just moved in right um so i mean i do a lot of different things i mean the biggest thing is and people i get a lot of funny uh feedback on this 
this happened actually the other day. Someone called me placing a uh, phone order and um, they were like, they hung up real quick because they were like, no, that's not the right number because it was my cell phone number attached to everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't have a business line set up yet because I wasn't ready to set it up during the, the build out of the store. And I also wanted a way for people to contact me. I wasn't in my store during the build out all the time, answering the phone all day. Right. Mm -hmm. So all my menus, all my business cards, I attached my cell phone. So that's making it super personal. You know, people are like, why would you do that? You probably have thousands of people calling you a day. And it was on Google and social media. Um, but I mean, I'm here to answer all the questions. So um, I put my cell phone number out there. A lot, yeah. of, a lot of customers and friends still have my cell phone number. It's on my business card. They call me at any time. I text them. I tell them to text me if that's easier. We're all busy. You know, our lifestyle, kids, families, business owners. Uh, so that makes it more personal, I think, because they're like, oh, wow, I'm directly contacting the owner. Yeah. Uh, some, pe some people can kind of... You know, some people don't want to be bothered, at, you know, sometimes. So they're like, why would you put your phone number? I'm like, you can bother me all day. I'm here to help you guys out. So, you know, I get texts all the time, phone calls. So that's the thing. But then I also get involved with the community. I see what's going on, what events people are doing. How can I help? How can I sponsor? How can I um, do different giveaways, different fun things of that nature too? How can I partner up with other things as it might be a massage therapist? It might be chiropractor or it might be a local gym um it might be donating a gift card to a giveaway for a radio station or yeah. um just kind of small things um to fill in bags for the apartment complex down the streets for their new move-ins with menus and discount cards or t-shirts and so fun things like that um i like to do fun giveaways because customers will walk in the door sometimes. I'm like, oh, cool. You just want a smoothie. And they're like, what? I just walked in. I'm like, yeah, I'm just having fun. You can have a smoothie. And so oh, I get it. I, I would come back if I want a smoothie. Yeah. So it's, I mean, that's kind of the energy I try to teach my team to have because it's not yeah. a transact. It's not a transaction in here. We're not looking, oh, okay, this guy's coming in for a transaction. We're just going to make money. I, that's not in my head at all. We're going to come in. We're going to hang out. You know, if you want to sit down and talk, um, I've eaten lunch with a bunch of my customers before because it's, becoming that building the community and fun and they come in all the time we know we know the names and so that's kind of my approach with it i'm not going to sell you something if you don't need it if you don't want it if you're not on board it doesn't make sense in your lifestyle it's not going to fit for your routine you know you, i mean it's, there's no point in it so i'm not going to push it on you yeah so how do you get your employees to feel the same way that's probably the toughest part about the job because, and I say this because we all have our outside things that we're, we're dealing with from stress to bills or all the other added stress that is added on. So a lot of people come in in different moods, you know, so it's, it's really building the morale of the team and having those pep, pep talks before you open. Um, and there's been many times where if like if the team's not feeling it or if someone's having a really rough day, I look at them and I'm like, Hey, you can, you can just take today off. Like we have it covered. I have it covered. I'll, I'll work the shift you know, collect your thoughts and I'll just give them the day off if it's really a rough day. Um, and so that's really, it's all about communication is the big thing that a lot of people miss on managing staff or owning a business. There's not, there's mm -hmm. never enough communication that you can have with your team. Yeah. It sounds like also, well, right now you are the, the one person who's, who's the franchise owner and the visible the marketing, the, the one, you know, yeah. The face of it. it yeah, it's a lot. Now that you've got you've got two locations, mm. and do you feel like you're spreading yourself thin? And if you have a goal of expansion, how are you going to manage that? Uh, so my my store in Virginia Beach, I have a solid team there. If, if I want to go take a month vacation, I know they're fine. I don't have to be there. Okay. I mean, he he handles all the inventory. Uh, I can set up interviews for BF on my phone and he'll do all of them. Uh, he does all the, like the deposits, all the behind the scene things if I need him to. So that's, you know, I, I'll build a team for Chesapeake as well. I'll put a store manager in place at one point. I had somebody helping me with marketing for a while. And that was a huge relief because there's a lot of things from Yelp pages, Google pages, Google AdWords, Google marketing from Instagram, Facebook, building those audiences, responding to messages, comments, posting on your story, keeping it fun, making videos. Um, and so I, I was having someone helping me for a while and then, um, just being a slow start to the year and then me being in my stores all the time, I kind of just cut back that expense because mm -hmm. that marketing dollar could go 
towards more of that marketing instead of paying a company or a person. Yeah. So it was, it was cutting a whole lot of thousands of dollars mm-hmm. for me just to do it and to reach more of an audience because that can go towards the audience. So right now, I'm not really on an overload as far as that point because I do have the help and the team and I rely on my staff a lot. Yeah. So, you know, I put a lot on the team and the, and the staff uh, and they and they know that. Um, but moving forward, like, like you said, I do want to grow and expand as far as I can uh, or as much as I can you know, with different and, and kind of in different fields, not always just, might not always just be the food industry, but mm-hmm. that's, that's just me as a person wanting to do more. So, I mean, I know if I'm spreading myself too thin, I know to bring somebody on when I need to, but again, I don't have a family. I don't have kids. I'm not married. So right now I enjoy working and that's pretty much all I do. Nice. Well, it sounds like you definitely are treating your staff the right way and they're taking care of you too. So that's always, that's always awesome to see. Mm-hmm. You know, especially in this environment with staffing, it's such a hard thing to do. Yeah, it is. Yeah, have so, you had a lot of trouble with staffing? Oh my gosh, yes. Yes, <laughs> it's been uh, ups and downs from most of it. It's just people are wanting a lot of money for you. you know, they just want a lot of money for a simple job. And, and I always watch how I say that because I don't say that to offend anybody because a lot oh, of yeah. people kind of like walking on eggshells when you own a, when you own a business. And it's really, that's been a really hard balance for me. Yeah. Cause people it's are hard. always There's watching a lot of money out there to go get too. That's, yeah, that's it is. So it. Like people are always watching what you're doing from your personal life to your business life. And so it's like, you're always treading on eggshells because it's, it's always an outside judgmental thing that I've always had to deal with, especially being a younger guy, which has been a huge challenge. Um, Cause when you're hiring staff and you're younger than your staff or, you know, they're the same age. That's, that becomes a challenge too. Um, yeah, I've had all kinds of people just not showing up. They work for a week and then they don't come back. Um, people don't care. They're the type of quality of work. People don't care. They're just trying to clock in, clock out, Mm -hmm. or they're trying to get unemployment. So they want to work for you for a week, but they don't understand. That's not how unemployment works. You don't Mm -hmm. get it. If you work for me for just a week, you're going to probably claim it on the last company that you worked for. Um, yeah. So I was just kind of mind blowing how it went in the past few years. Uh, Cause you know, we do the best we can with our mm-hmm. business model so, to sustain staff. I mean, I wish I could pay everybody $20, $30 an hour for the, the business model <laughs> with our pricing that we sell $6 meals. People yeah. don't understand. Oh yeah. Okay. You know, I can't pay someone $18 to make that meal at six bucks. Mm-hmm. That's the meal plan meal. Yeah, I mean, six fifty two a meal if you buy twenty one. You know, our our, our uh, cafe, <laughs> yeah, our cap our cafe average tick pricing on cafe is ten dollars. You come into the cafe, so again, you know, it's it's yeah, it's a balance of payroll and a lot a lot of people yeah. don't see that business side of things. And it's a simple, simple like I say, a simple task. You're not you're not working in a five star dining restaurant, a small cafe. You know, you're putting wraps together, you, you're scooping rice, you're weighing things, you're weighing things out. So it's, it's hard to build a hiring ad nowadays because people coming from the restaurant business, they're coming from bigger restaurants. So that's the, that's the kind of competitive pay they're expecting, but that's not the type of work that they'll be doing in our business model at all. So mm-hmm. getting them to understand that without them actually seeing what they have to do has been a struggle because yeah. I explain it to them. My best yeah. way of explaining it to where they understand, it, I was like, "Hey, man, you you were working in Norfolk, you know, Waterside at this re- restaurant, getting eighteen bucks an hour, which is cool. They got five different stations. You got a fry station, a grill station. Guy down the line is making pizza. This guy's making salads all day. Mm-hmm. He's breading chicken all day. Like we don't have fryers. We don't do any of that stuff. That's not how we're set up. Yeah. I was like, you're expecting to make eighteen an hour to work at Subway." Subway, right? That's kind of how comparable is. You think Subway is going to pay you 18 bucks an hour to put lettuce on a wrap? Yeah. That's out. That's outrageous. And that's 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 crazy. And that's how I explain it because we don't have fryers. You know, you're not making, you're not kneading dough. You're not making pasta from scratch. You're not doing all this meticulous, this you yeah, know, tedious thing. Specialty. Yeah. Needed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's so it's, it's it's super fun. It's laid back. The hours are great. You know, that's yeah. another thing being open from 11 to seven during the week and 11 to three on weekends. Um, so we have tons of prep time. 
So, you know, that's another thing, you know, people with families get off super early, you know, they don't have to work super late, you know, because a lot of these other industries are working later. Especially yeah, the restaurant industry for sure. Oh yeah. You're working till like midnight or 2 a.m. Oh yeah. Well, we are running out of time. Uh, yeah. Kylie, any questions you'd like to ask at the end? Uh, one, which is might put you on the spot a little bit was just, um, I presume that this came about originally with the owners to set yourselves apart from other people who offer things. Yeah. Who would you say are your biggest competitors? Man, I, I love that question because it's, we, there's a lot of competition in Virginia Beach. There's a lot of meal plan companies. I know all of them. I know most of the owners, all great people. I, I like to, I tend to like to think I have great relationships with them. Um, I've talked to them before I've met them, you know, if they need help in any aspect, I, I say, Hey, yeah, I'll help you out. You know? So I'm, I'm very friendly with my competition. I don't look at competition as like a competing kind of way. Like I want, I want to see them to do well. I want me to do well. You know, I want, there's I want enough to, for everyone. Yeah. There's enough for everyone. There's tons of people out there, but I, you know, you health food is hard to come by. So the more of us out there helping the communities is awesome. But we do a lot of different things different. Like we don't have contracts or subscriptions. Our meal plans are the most affordable around. I challenge everybody all the time. They're like, they look at that and like, oh, that's that's expensive. I'm like, I, I'll price match anybody locally that is cheaper than I am. And no one ever comes back with a cheaper plan, cheaper meal. Um, yeah. I, I challenge that all the time. To You can walk in our storefront cafe and get customer service. A lot of these other meal plan companies might be shipping to your door. They don't always have a brick and mortar store all the time. Right. So if there's a problem, if there's a question, if you're unsure of things, because a lot of people don't like change, they're uncomfortable, it's scary, they don't know what the hell thing's about, come in, hang out with me, hang out with my staff, talk to us, makes them feel super comfortable. So we can help you in all those aspects. So there's a lot of things that sep separate us from all the other uh, companies out there. Um, okay. But again, at the end of the day, I support all of them that are kind of doing what we do. Excellent. <laughs> Yeah, great. All right, Dylan. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. How do people get a hold of you? How do they find you guys? Uh, so my Virginia Beach store is at 1065 Independence Boulevard. It's in Hagen Shopping Center. Mm -hmm. um, Chesapeake is at 1036 Volvo Parkway. Uh, it's right behind pretty much the Greenbrier Mall, Mall over here. Um, you can check us out on social media and Instagram on Facebook. You can message us on there. It's super easy. Uh, Google's the best way. Really, Google us. You'll find our number. Oh, yeah. You can give us a phone call. Um, my cell phone number might be even on there still. I gotta look. So you might be calling me just saying, so we'd always answer. We'll help you out and just give us a call. Okay. Excellent. All right. Well, you've been listening to the retail is podcast. If you've enjoyed what you heard, you can find more at retailalliance.com slash retail dash is dash podcast, or you can search YouTube for retail Alliance. I'm Joey Morgan. And I'm Kylie Ross Seibert. Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.